is Mike here, Hampshire Outdoors and Survival. Um, here we are, we're out in the woods again today. It's been a grotty week. It's rained non-stop. I hope the weather and conditions wherever you were were better. Um, we've had, just it's just kept coming down. Um, this is the first day where we've had a little bit of brightness and uh, the rain stopped. But of course, being November with that, temperatures dropping. Um, I like the winter myself. I don't. I'm not a big fan of rain, but I like it when it's frosty. I like it when it's clear, and I like it cold. Anyhow, off we go. Let's have some fun. I managed to get some reasonable footage, and therefore we can make a, a nice video and, and show you a little bit of the local area. So onwards, the uh, meth stove. I, I, my Trangier has had it. It had cracked. It's about 40 years old, so it had its day. And I decided that it was time for a new Trangier. However, looking at the prices of them and looking online, I, I, I spotted this one and I thought, you know what? For £15, I will buy it and give it a go and review it for you guys and give you my honest opinion. So uh, it comes in a lovely little bag, um, quite a sturdy bag. Um, I don't know how long the material lasts, but the stitching looks okay and the bag looks quite nice. Um, it's a Hikeman, so there we go, fifteen pounds. It's a it's a meth stove. What can I say? A meth stove is a meth stove. Um, it's how the quality that they're built with, the actual materials and how thick they are, that makes a real difference. But this one comes with a a pot stand, the meth stove with a screw on cap, and a nice little lid for obviously snuff in the fire and it also has a simmer ring which is a nice little touch um we'll see how it lasts with time not that impressed with the rivet on the simmer ring i think i'll end up probably replacing that in the near future because i don't think it's going to last forever but we'll see how it goes you know i could be wrong the um pot stand is nice and light i would say it's probably titanium it's, it's, it's very, very light and, and it's not ready to crush. So that's a good thing. The, uh, the only thing I will say with the pot stand, that way up, obviously your tin mugs might be a little bit small for it, but you can reverse it to sit over the med stove like that. So let's spark her up and have a look. Obviously, when you're using a meth stove, always remember, never put this lid back on hot. Um, there's a rubber ring inside here, and that won't last 30 seconds against the heat. So, meth stoves. What I have found with this one, it doesn't want to be filled all the way to the brim. It likes to be filled about one third, and then it will bloom quite readily. Um, So, place cook stove into the ring. It's nicely supported. It's not going to fall off. Like your stove. Place on whatever you want to cook. It's as simple as that. It's a meth stove. I'm not going to go into massive details about them. Most people have used them or at least have an idea. Now, I will say meth stoves, cold weather, absolutely brilliant. Used by explorers for, for donkey's years. And in cold weather, they are good. This, this stuff will usually light down to minus 17 without too much difficulty. Um, preferred method for lighting it for a lot of people is a match because you can actually drop it into the pot. It gives a slightly longer burn. It warms the meths. That vaporizes and it lights more readily. Um, nice, lightweight, efficient bit of kit. Carry a small bottle of meths with you and away you go. You can use denatured alcohol. Um, yeah, what more can I say about it? It's a, it's a meth stove. They're not far. Um, these things, guys... 
they, they, they use some lightweight campers who have got the time, the pleasure, once they get to base camp to set up to get organised. So it's not the quickest thing in the world, but it is a light thing and it is a good alternative go-to. BTU rating on them, I, I've no idea. I'm going to see if I can work that out and find it out for you. But they do give off plenty of heat. They will boil your water. They will make you a brew. If you want to improve the cook time, use one of these on the Swedish stove set with its, its surround and its windbreak. Absolutely brilliant. Um, I did some tests with all these things so that I don't have to make this video a long, boring video. And with the Swedish cook set, uh, I bought boiled half a litre water in the dirty can, 7.5 minutes to simmer, and it was boiling a rolling boil at nine minutes. Okay, so that's not too bad at all. That's livable. We can go with that. Um, it's 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 a way of doing it. So there we go. Heikman meth stove from Amazon, sub twenty quid with the cook set. If you're just starting out and you want a cheap, simple system that you can take out with you, it's a way to go. Combine this with the Swedish cook set, you Rolls Royce. You're laughing. Um, that will make a really nice little bushcraft camp set for starting out with. Anyhow, moving on, guys. We will go over to the Kelly Kettle. Now, one of the questions I was asked after my last video, uh, Electra RC, big hi up to you. How you doing? I hope all is good. Um, could you use a meth burner on a Kelly Kettle? And yes, you can. Right, you could use a you could use a, a meth stove on a Kelly kettle, but it's slow. It's a very 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 slow system. Again, um, four pints of water in that, and it took a while. It was we were looking at. Let's have a look. My notes. Kelly kettle meth stove. Four cups of water, and that is four of these cups of water. Um, so it's a reasonable size cup. Um, we were looking at 17 minutes, and at 17 minutes it wasn't a rolling boil, but it was hot enough to make a drink. So not for sterilising, but for boiling. Um, for setting the meth stove up in a Kelly kettle, obviously you've got the 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 base pan there, which you're going to use. You're going to put your meth stove into your your pan. You're going to light it. Um, now, what I did find, I'm just going to put some water in the Kelly kettle. What I did find was as soon as you put that chimney on there, it starts to warm. Um, because of the amount of heat coming off of this, it, it was drawing in and it was creating quite a roar. However, although that sounded awesome, and it made me think, this is working a gem. What it actually did was it accelerated the heat through the chimney and out through the top. So it was moving too fast. So what I, what I did, and I've seen people do it before, so I just thought I'd try it myself. I just took a, a small aluminium lid, punched some holes in it. And first of all, I tried placing it in front of the air intake. And that, that slowed it down a bit. But then I found placing it on top. Now, that will make it boil faster. And again, it's, it's, it's slower than standard. But it will bring it to a boil. Okay? Um, with all these things, it depends on your situation. If you've got, if you're base camp, you've got plenty of time, then you can run with it. You, it, it, it will, it, the way to go. If you're not at base camp and you don't have a lot of time, then that's not the way to go. So anyhow, now there's an interesting thing. Now that I wasn't expecting. So at home, indoors, trying this method in, in the man cave, it worked. These holes need to be larger. What I've just done is I've just snuffed the oxygen out from the meth stove and it's gone out. So, again, it's, we're, we're coming back to uh, it's a not working situation. If you were at home 
in an emergency situation and the meth stove's all you've got to to boil your water on your Kelly kettle, it will do it. You've got time there, you've got patience, so yeah, you could use it. It's a viable technique, not one I would necessarily go to out in the woods. It's going to take too long. Um, but there we go. That is the meth stove on the Kelly kettle. Of course, the other bonus with the, the meth stove on the Kelly kettle is if you've got the hobo stove. Now, there we go. That's a system that works, and it works quite well. Uh, we did a, I did a, a time burn on that using this exact technique. So, two cups of water. So two cups of water. We were looking at just over eight minutes. So two cups of water, eight minutes using the hobo stove. And as you can see, the, the flame is licking up quite readily around the, the base of the pan. So it does work. Um, combined with the Kelly kettle, it's not a bad bit of kit. It will get you out of trouble. And for your home emergency, yes, it will work. So am I a fan of the meth stove? So, guys, using pellet on the Kelly kettle, as I said before, put it in, I put a really good handful in there, pulled it up, lit it, and it was having trouble drawing the oxygen. So, we made, I made a simple wire rack, and it is just a simple wire rack. Kelly family, if you're out there, give it a go. Try it with wood pellet. It's an alternative for people. Um... So place that in, um, take some oak pellets, and these are oak, and I wanted to go with oak because it will give me a slower, hotter burn, which is more realistic for what you want to do. Now, this wire rack is a little bit large, and I do find some of the pellets fall through, but I don't find that too much of an issue. Place my pellets on there. Um, ignition today, we're going to go with cotton wool buds, purely simply because it's easy. Silver birch, have a look at it, burn bag, and there we go, cotton wool buds. Right, so, take cotton wool buds. And I could, I could have placed the cotton wool buds in first if I'd been a bit more sensible, but hey ho. Place them under, underneath the wire rack. And in placing them underneath the wire rack, it's going to give me a, a heat source coming from underneath so the idea i've had here and it's probably been done before i'm probably not the first i'm not a genius but the idea being in my theory is that the cotton wool is going to create heat i'm going to put the chimney on with the kelly kettle that's going to draw the oxygen underneath the wood chip and burn the wood chip from underneath heat rising through it should give me a faster burn and again yeah, we'll, 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 we'll do it because you want to do it. We'll go with the striker. There we go. Easy as that. So, my cotton buds are alight. Take my Kelly kettle. Put some water into my Kelly kettle. It's already a drop of water in there from an earlier part of the video. You never want to put a Kelly kettle onto a fire dry. Um, it does damage them. Now, again, these corks, and I, I can't say it enough, 
I'm only gently placing the cork in. It's literally just dropped in. I wouldn't want to seal this at all in any way. And if you haven't got a breathable cork, never put it in there when you're heating water. You will cause an explosion. I'm going to place that on there. And we're going to let that start to burn. Now, when I tested this at home, it didn't take long at all to get going. But uh, obviously, it's real time. We're out in the woods. It's a little bit damp. And it's a little bit manky. We'll get the Kelly Cattle going on wood chip. Or wood pellets. And we'll see how well that does. Um, it's been a long day. It's my first brew of the afternoon. So I'm going to put a brew on. And rather than have you guys get bored whilst I'm doing this, we'll have a chat. A little chat. So, here I am out in the woods. I'm in the Surrey Hills today. This is a site that's used for off-road driver training um, by a very, very good company who allow me to come in and use their bit of woods. And I've had a chat to the owner today. And if anybody out there that is in the UK or even abroad and wants to come over for a weekend, you want to come over, they're quite happy for me to use this for an overnighter um, and to open out to other people that would be interested in coming out to do one. However, I've got to limit the numbers. It's only a six acre wood. It does have neighbours. Um, so I've got to be very, very respectful and careful. So if there's anybody out there in the community in this area that would be interested in coming out and doing an overnighter sharing skills sharing ideas whether you're a beginner or whether you're very very experienced i'm laying it out there and open to you yeah you know, i would i would dearly love to have you out here for a night um i would like to actually do one in the winter and do one in the summer but we'll see how it goes we'll see what the response is um other than that I hope you've all liked the videos thus far, um, and I hope you agree with me. I, I feel they're getting better. There we go. We'll pull it. We've already got a flame from the top. Um, I, I, I'd like to feel that I'm entertaining and I, I'm, I'm helping to educate without ramming it down people's throat. So, back to an earlier video. Knives. So, UK knife law. So, in the UK, and I know it's different for other countries, but in the UK... The law says that it is illegal for a person in the UK to carry a bladed instrument without justifiable reason. Okay, That means that you have to show a reasonable cause to have your knife with you. Um, although a knife with a blade below, I believe it's two and three quarters, or that's how I've usually worked it, three inches, um, that is non-locking, uh, not gravity knife and not spring assisted opening is legal for the carry in the UK. In other words, pen knife. So I carry a pen knife and I carry a pen knife most of the time with me. I go with the Lansky World Legal Knife. I find it's a reasonable chunk to use. It fits in my hand. Um, it holds a good edge and it won't close on my fingers. It's not a lock knife, but the way they've designed it is that if it does close up on you, it's not going to cut your hand open. It's not going to lock a finger off. So I find that's a very, very good knife. It's a Lansky knife. Again, you can find them online. You can find them in shops. It's the Lansky World Legal. And it, it is sub £30. And I've had this one for nine months. And I've abused it. It's not broken. It's not let me down. The only thing I would like to do, I'm going to file out this edge here so I can use it on a ferro rod. But it's a good knife. Very good knife. And again... I carry that in my pocket, and it is there, you know, I cut string, seat belts in emergencies, I'm out in the woods, things like that, not a problem. On top of that, you'll never see me without a multi-tool, and I carry a multi-tool with me all the time. I ride a motorcycle, I grew up on a farm, I've always got a multi-tool with me, and my mates and my friends are firmly all ears, Mick, you got your multi-tool? Mick, you got your multi-tool? Yeah, because I've always got it with me. The problem with the multi-tool in the UK 
is it has locking blades, which makes it illegal for UK use. However, what I've done on mine, I've disabled the lock quite simply by taking the blade off. Where the spring that locks it comes up, I've placed a thin washer underneath so that neither of the blades actually lock. Now, the, the upside of that is it makes it legal. The downside is I have to be very careful not to close it on my fingers. But again, it's good knife handling skills. And that makes that legal for me to have in my pouch, on my belt, at all times. It's not illegal for me to have with me. With the exception of obviously going out clubbing or into a pub or, or going into a school. Yeah, I wouldn't want to carry a knife or a bladed instrument with me in those environments. Um, when I go out into the woods in my bag, I've normally got my bushcraft knife. And this one I've had for well in excess of 10 years. I used to use it for game preparation, which is why I originally bought this one at a game fair. Um, because it's got nice open grips on the blade. I, I could slide my fingers up the blade and use just the tip, yet they were shallow enough for me to be able to clean it and keep it clean. Um, it's been a good knife for me. It's lasted well. Got a ferro rod on the sheath, so that is my bushcraft knife. And this is an MOD survival knife. Again, you can pick these up cheaply from the army surplus shops. It's a hunk of knife, and it was designed primarily to, to be a survival tool. It was designed to hack. It was designed to be a chunk. It was a, just a simple, sturdy, solid knife. It holds a good edge. It's got a good carbon steel. Um, you won't bend or break it. Hang on, let's take the kettle off. There we go, wood pellet has worked a treat. And I've set fire to my wooden block, but I'm not too worried by that. It's a sacrificial block rather than damaging the bench. No, so we can place the hobo stove on there. Place a mess tin on there. It shouldn't really do dry. And we can put a ball in the bag in there. So, again, back to the knives. So that was the, the, the MOD survival knife, British Army issue, RAF issue. Um, one of the things that comes back is, oh, it hasn't got a particularly fancy handle. It hasn't, because it was designed with just a big solid chunk of a handle that you could then sand down to fit your own hand. It was designed to be one size fits all, shape it to what you need. And that, again, I use that for battening. I use that for, for just all, all the camp jobs that I need. It's a good, solid tool. I like it. All right, anyhow, that's enough knives. Let's get on to a brew. Oh, I'm starting to simmer. Simmer my dinner. This is what we want. Oh. So, we've got a brew. Got the hobo stove going. Okay. We've reviewed the meth stove, which I, I do like. We've had a quick chat about knives. Uh, knives, education, isn't it? Teach people to be sensible with them teach them to use them as a tool and not to see them as a, um, some sort of uh, status symbol, then uh, you don't have an issue. That there, I've got off my, my high horse there. Um, I would like to say a very big thank you um, to everybody that subscribed. Yeah, dudes, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. It's given me a lot of encouragement. Um, hopefully I can make better videos and we can get better at this and we can do more. If there's any of you subscribers or any of you guys watching this that 
or, or in England that want to come out for a, a night, an overnighter in the woods, hit me up, let me know in the comments. You're more than welcome. We'll get out here and we'll have some fun. We'll trade some skills, some abilities, whether you're an absolute beginner or whether you're somebody that knows exactly what they're doing. Not a problem. Um, one other thing I would also like to say is a lot of, a lot of my subscribers and a lot of the views are Amer from America. Guys, welcome to the UK. This is what we've got here, and I'll endeavour to show you a little bit of our countryside and a little bit of how we do things. Um, again, different climates, different countries, different systems, different laws, different rules. So I have to apply the rules and the system that we have in the UK uh, and make sure I stick within our, our rules and regs. Um, but I'm always fascinated to watch how you guys do things as well. Um, techniques, ideas. Um, indigenous systems yeah I'm interested in them all it's, it's I just want to learn and uh, encourage other people to learn um, so here we go it's a proof of concept the wood pellet in the hobo stove boil in the bag military issue I only look to see what I've got today I think it's an all-day breakfast um, it works it works and the beauty of this system is, as the light's dropping today, which I don't think you can really tell on camera, but it's starting to get a little bit dusky. The nice thing is, I've got warmth from the fire. As you see, I'm, I'm fairly close to it because it is starting to chill down a bit. I get the light from it. Fire is warming, it's comforting, it's something we like to have around us. Very good. Now looking in there, the wood pellet is starting to die out, it's starting to die off. Um, so I should lift that off, let that sit for a minute or two, and enjoy my hobo stove. And of course, I can now take that off very carefully using my pliers on the multi tool. Place that to one side to cool. I could now place sticks on that if I wish to. If I wanted to keep the fire in for the evening, I could do. I could put another handful of pellet on that and it would ignite and keep burning and it would give me what I would call a social flame. So I'll place that on there. underneath and again social flame that's it it's one of those warm and relaxing things that we all enjoy so what have we got and it is warm sausage and beans okay uh, now i'll be honest with you sausage and beans that is not one of my favorites um but it's good enough Now, as we say, as we said before, the issue with the boil in the bag, the ones without expandable bottoms will fall over. But being a foil bag, you can fold it up and you can carry it around with you as you need to. Um, I've got a nice little wedge in this here. I can eat it out there. Water from that, if I needed to, I could use to make a brew. I've already done on the Kelly Kettle. Um, so one of the things you can do is you take your, your item that you, you boiled your bag in and stick your bag in there and wedge it open. Now, again, it comes back to old things. I, I don't like cooking in the pots and the pans. I don't like putting food in the pots and pans unless I'm using something like a a frying pan or a coated saucepan and the reason being is you've got to keep this clean you're going to boil water in it for drinking you, you and you don't want to waste a resource by having to keep cleaning it out and cleaning it out and cleaning it out so i keep that clean i use boiling the bags if i'm going to come out and i'm going to be cooking in the field i'm going away 
I'll use a Dutch oven. If I'm living off the local environment, what I can pick, I can find, I can hunt, I can process it, and I want to cook it on this, then I'll use grills. I'll use pans that are designed for that rather than a mess tin. Mess tin's aluminium. Ideally, you don't really want to go scraping that surface and then eating it. You know, it's, it's aluminium at the end of the day. Um, there are stainless steel ones out there. They're a bit more expensive um, and they're better. But I've got an aluminium one. I only boil water in it. Sausage and beans. You know. Not never been my my go to. Um, but it does the job. It does the job. Um, again, it's fuel for a soldier. Get some calories into you. Well, this is me. This is me out here. I was going to, if I had time today, do a bit of a shelter. Unfortunately, um, there was a client in the woods here doing their, their driving course. So I took you for a walk, and we came back when they finished, which means I'm running out of daylight. I'm going to edit this tonight, get it up tonight, and then uh, it's out for you guys for the weekend. Thank you for watching. Hit me up with comments. Tell me what you want to see. Tell me, um, please, please, please comment. Let me know what you think. Um, I've got s subscribers out there. Let me know what you think. You know, if, if you want me to do other things, I'll do them. Um, if you want me to build a bushcraft camp, this woods here, we're going to be clearing some trees. that will give me some resources for doing it. I've spoken to the owner. He's happy for me to build a shelter. Um, yeah, and we can push forward with this channel. And it, although I'm the one here doing this and making it, guys, the way I think of it, it's not just my channel. It's our channel. It's for all of us. You're watching it and enjoying it. If you weren't watching and enjoying it, I wouldn't be making it. So let me know what you want, how you'd like me to do it, how you'd like me to progress, and what you'd like to see. If you'd like to see more of the British countryside, um, let me know. Um, I don't know if you want more videos of bits of Waverley Abbey and places like that. Um, I'm located between Surrey and Hampshire. I'm literally just three miles over the border into Hampshire. So I, I can travel um, reasonably within the UK. I'm going down to the West Country next year, down to Cornwall, which is where I'm from. Going to take you all along down there. We're going to do some beach stuff. Uh, we're going to be finding some food on the beach, and we'll be building some some fires on the beach. I'm not, I will endeavour to make that as entertaining as fun as possible. Um, a lot of my family are from Cornwall. Hey, yeah, it's onward and upward with the channel. I hope you all have fun with it. Well, hopefully, I'm not making a hat. I got it. yeah. Hopefully, I'm not making a hash in this one today. And. Uh, the channel it's not going to be me just always eating but i've got to admit it's been a long old day and i'm pretty 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 starving so guys this is mick hampshire outdoors and survival thank you for watching the sun is starting to set i've got to clean this up put it all out get it all organized I'm going to go home, edit this for you guys, and hopefully it'll be up for you tonight. Thank you for watching. To all my subscribers, thank you very, very much. Please like and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Um, let me know if there's anything you want me to do for you. Big hi to Electra RC. Hopefully that answers your question when it comes to the meth stove and the pellets. And, and I'm prepared to do that for anybody. Any of you out there that hits me up with the question, hey Mick, how do I... I'll, I'll, I'll do it for you. I'll, I'll find out, see what we can do. And if I can't do it, or I don't know the answer, I will be truthful with you. But then that gives me an excuse to make a video about learning it, isn't it? Um, that's where we went with this. So, guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you're having an awesome time where you are. Peace and love to you all. May your day be as good as mine. Until next time, Hampshire Outdoors and Survival. This is Mick out.